Good morning, Saints. This is Ella Harvey here at the building, uh, the Church of Henrico. Um, no members are here this morning uh, because of the um, uh, pandemic and the um, rules and regulations concerning the gathering of people in a, in a building. Uh, but we're we're so happy that you had a chance to tune in to us here on YouTube and to keep us in your prayers and we'll keep you in our prayers. Uh, this morning we're going to take a look at uh, 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 a, a topic that um, we think that is good for the entire body of Christ. Before we go any further, let us have a word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we, we thank you and we praise you. We heard you say uh, in the book of Acts, come boldly, book of Hebrews, come boldly unto the throne of grace that you might receive help and grace in a time of need. We need you, Jesus. I need you. The church of the Lord needs you. The church of Hemreco needs you. Every believer needs you, Jesus. Every believer needs your comfort and the peace that you offer us through faith in, 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 your, in your shed blood. <clears throat> and bless this message as it goes out. May it be sufficient in meeting those needs that you designed it for. Forgive us of our many sins and trespasses and cleanse our hearts and our minds right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you and we praise you. Empower us now to preach, to teach. In Jesus' name, amen. Again, uh, here at the, <clears throat> the Church of Henrico, um, we're looking at the book of Matthew chapter 11. If you have a chance to go there, please do. In the book of Matthew uh, at chapter 11, verses 25 through 30, uh, is a call to discipleship. His disciples. He makes disciples. I, I really don't make disciples. I, I can't make a disciple. Uh, the Holy Spirit makes disciples, and the disciples have to have a a certain commitment and qualification that they they have to to meet. The disciple has to meet first of all the Lord Jesus Christ. Then he has to be committed. To follow him and to learn from him so that he can teach others and others can teach others is a thing of that nature one teaches others what he has been taught and so it passes on down through the generation of the church aid but at the same time it is Christ that does the teaching through the Holy Spirit through each individual that is his disciple that has committed himself to the work of Christ through the Holy Spirit. As I read here, listen to, to what, what the scripture shares with us. Verse 25, And at that time, Jesus answered and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because thou hast hidden these things from the wise and prudent, and has revealed them unto babes. All things are delivered unto me by my Father, and no man knoweth the Son but the Father, and no, no man the, the Father except the Son, and he so, whomsoever he shall reveal him to. Come unto me, all ye that labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me for I am meek and lowly in heart and you shall find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The invitation to come to him he will deal with all of your burdens 
all those areas of your life that hinders you from really truly being a true disciple. I uh, we we met here last Friday. Um, several brothers, uh, Jenny Myers, um, James Lewis. Many of you know him as New James Lewis, and of course, uh, yours truly. Uh, there were another which was supposed to meet with us, but he had some er some things he had to take care of. What I'm alluding to here is that we looked at this passage of scripture here, uh, Matthew uh, chapter 11, and particularly pay more pay a lot of attention to verse 28. 29 and 30 and I'll read that to you again uh, if you have your Bibles please uh, read, go along with us and, and take a look come unto me all ye that labor and heavy laden and I will give you rest take my yoke upon you learn of me for I am meek and lowly in heart and you shall find rest for your souls my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Jesus was talking to a group of uh, individuals. He had just eulogized John the Baptist. And now he was canvassing for more disciples. That was there will never be another disciple as John was. He made a statement of that along when he was in, in preaching a eulogy. But at the same time, his eulogy also consisted of an invitation for those who are burdened down and heavy laden with the cares of this life. I, I, I don't know how to say this really, but I'm surprised at believers who are caught up in this world's system as far as the thoughts are concerned. I, very seldom, I'm just being honest here, very seldom do I meet a believer and we talk about Jesus and talk about the things of the kingdom and talk about what Christ desires the believer to get involved with. Maybe a few things are said in salutations, bless the Lord all my heart and all my strength and but they'll soon drift off <clears throat> into this long debate about the world system and all the problems and trials and tribulations that are in the world system. And I, I will listen, and I'm not saying I'm any better than anybody else. Yeah, I am not. What I'm saying is that somewhere a believer have to abandon the philosophy and teaching of the world system. Um, Jesus said this in the, right here in the book of Luke, I mean Matthew, come unto me all that are labor and heavy laden and I will give you rest. Now Jesus is aware of every situation. I it doesn't matter what you're going through, Christ knows about it. And sometimes he's deeply involved with it, but you may not realize it. Uh, he's over your, your trials, your tribulations. He's king over those. <coughs> Excuse me. He's over the, the, the trials and 
pitfalls that the enemy has laid. Well, maybe you're not aware of that. And so the propaganda, the lies, the false accusation, the threat, the fear, it's everywhere. But if you allow that to consume you, what will happen, you may actually know Jesus, but your mind has been peppered or seeded with things of doubt and confusion and fear and hopelessness. That's what I wanted to share with you this morning. The believer who has risen above that type of rhetoric and that type of philosophy, that type of no type of fear tactics is truly one who enjoys Christ. I'm not talking about singing here. I'm not even talking about a good message. But I'm talking about enjoying Christ whether there's singing or whether there's no preaching. Enjoying Him on your day-to-day -day walk, your day-to-day -day, uh, activities. You enjoy Him because your mind is stayed on Him. And I look at this this invitation here uh, that Christ uttered these words there that day when he was speaking to the multitude. A lot of hope had been dissolved here because of the death of John the Baptist and there are other things that went on there perhaps that we don't even know about but knowing human humans and humanity there's always something tragic going on in in humanity someone just blew up something someone just killed somebody someone just raped somebody someone just lied on somebody some war had just broke out somebody is starving to death and these things goes on all the time in in the human um, realm. And I'm not saying, what I'm saying here, friend, that you better be in Christ here to deal with the, with all the thoughts that go along with all these tragic things that happen. And these things have been happening over eons of time. As my wife was speaking to me yesterday, she said, there's nothing new under the sun. I think Ecclesiastes made that, that statement in the book of Ecclesiastes. There's nothing new under the sun. People have always been killing each other ever since the first murder of, 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 of Cain over Abel. And murder and Tragedy has always been a, a element of human society, and I'm not been, I'm not philosophizing anything here. I'm not saying that's the way it is. And there are men and women who are perpetrators of this fear factor. It's on your news. It's on your headlines. In fact, if they could, the only way they could sell a paper is that they put in some element of fear or some doubt or some something or controversial. But he, listen to what Jesus said. We, I'll read it again and hope you get on board here. Come unto me, all ye that labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Thank you, Jesus. Take my yoke upon on you and Learn of me, I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest for your souls. My yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Uh, let's go back 2,000 years ago and more. As Jesus was standing here preaching or teaching 
or giving this profound invitation. He was speaking to the crowd that was there who was delusion, hopelessness. Of course, there were those that were standing there that were affluent, they had money, they had power, they had prestige, they had nice homes, they had nice chariots, the children were being well educated and well taken care of, they had nice shoes and of course the poor and the, uh, the loathsome were sitting there too and Christ began to speak as he uttered these words and it fell on the ears of those that were gathered there the poor the downtrodden the weak the abused the hurting the hopelessness the drunkard the adulterer the fornicator the liar the cheat the hypocrite the rich the poor those words uh, Jesus uttered and there were those who heard those words if, if you were there <clears throat> in that group I wonder what your response would have been concerning those profound words remember now we, we, we that are believers and those of us that are truly overcomers are, are practicing the overcomer life we have a tremendous advantage over those who were there the reason I said that because Jesus had not died and rose again and he had not fulfilled his promise of sin the Holy Spirit that he would lead us and guide us and it would be our comforter he will be our teacher. He will be our leader. He will be our guide. He will be our sustainer. He will be all those things that that present crowd or individuals that was listening to Jesus didn't have. The same principle today. There are many souls that are not privileged to this teaching and the revelation in the New Testament of Christ Jesus. Getting back to this scene here was a scene of a lot of souls, a lot of restless souls. You've been there. A lot of hurting souls. A lot of disregarded kicked aside, abused, manipulated, the rapist, the raper and the rapist, and the raper were there, the liar and the cheat were there, perhaps. Just think of this multitude there. And Christ said, Come unto me, all that labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. With any man, let, let us remain there 2,000 years ago. There are no, no public transportation. There's no cars. No three-piece suits. No air condition. No paved roads. No cushy seats to sit in. They're probably standing on sitting on the on the ground and this man opens his mouth and utters these profound words come unto me all ye that labor and heavy laden and I will give you rest take my yoke upon you Learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and my burdens are easy to bear. And you'll find rest 
for your souls. And my yoke is easy and my burdens are light. So there are two things that jumped out at me. He said, you got heavy burdens and you're laden with iniquities and other things that have you almost level to the ground but I have I'm offering you something that will lift you out of that degradation and that depth of sorrow or remorse or hopelessness or whatever you're going through I my burdens are light I have burdens but they're light I'm listening to Jesus here 2,000 years ago. Can you put yourself in that group there? You don't know a thing about this, this man that's speaking here. I know a lot about him. I've been with him 40 some years. I don't know everything about him, but I know a lot about him. You can't be with a, any individual for a length of time and learn nothing all about them. And Jesus is willing to share with us or the believer many things about himself that he would not share with anybody else who's not interested in him. The reason I said that because before I came to Jesus, I, I didn't know anything about Jesus at all. And I'm, I'm making a plea here, and hopefully that you get on board, especially those of you, if you're looking and you don't know Jesus, and those who are looking and they have not totally given up or been rescued from the things that Jesus is speaking of here concerning that, that group that day he was speaking to them. Come unto me all that labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest for your souls. My yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Jesus says, Come unto me, all ye that labor, Labor where? In the mind with issues that seem to have no answer. There are three play three things about us that the enemy knows that can really drive us completely to the loony bin. The body is made up of the soul is that the body is three parts. Spirit, man. It's three parts. Spirit, soul, and body. What you see here this morning is a tripod, a trichotomy. Spirit, soul, and what you see out here is the body. The looking at the body really doesn't say who I am. Because who I am is really is in my soul <clears throat> and in my mind. Now there are mind, emotions, and will that Satan uh, uh, attacks the mind. You find rest for your souls. The mind, the will, and emotions make up the soul life. In the book of Genesis, you can see where Genesis uh, 2 7, you can see where God scooped down into the dust of the earth and formed man from the dust of the ground and breathe into his body and man became a living soul. 
breathe life into the body of uh, what he has scooped from the ground and what is shaped. How that happened, I have no idea. But the scripture does say man was shaped from the dust of the ground and then God breathed into his nostrils and man became a living soul. And that soul consists of three elements. The mind, the will, and emotions. What you see in every day circumstances are those particular items that Satan has designed to attack and to destroy and to, 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 to delude the soul, the mind, the will, and emotions. Jesus came to save the soul. The body will be changed <clears throat> in the, up there in the air in a moment and twinkle of an eye. The only thing that God, that man has that's worth saving is his soul. Because that's who man really is. His soul. Paul says in the book of Philippians, work out your soul salvation with fear and trembling. Man is a soul. This body houses the soul, whether it's white, yellow, black, green, brown, red, many colors. But inside of this body, there is a, a soul light, which is many times determined by the emotions the mind and the will. When these things are functioning under the under the world system, who's the and Satan is the god of this world, the ruler of this world. Uh, Jesus spoke about that in the book of uh, John's Gospel. He's a ruler of this world. And he also mentioned that in the book of Second Corinthians with. Paul wrote to the Corinthian believers uh, that he's the God of this age and he has blinded the minds of those who believe not. And also, in a little bit, he has also blinded or is blinding the minds of those who even believe because the mind is not in transformation. I hope I'm not boring you here, but Paul says in the book of, of, of Romans, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by renewing of your mind. So as Christ was speaking to that group of um, individuals, each had a soul. And Christ was more concerned about their souls. He was deeply concerned about their souls his only concern was about their souls because the flesh was going back to the dust from which it came. So my friends, don't place a lot of emphasis on the way you look, the way you smell, your hair, how it's done. Because all that's going back to the, to the dust from which it came. But in the book of Ecclesiastes said, the soul will return to God who gave it. So Jesus died to save souls. He died to save people, but people are soul, souls. And your soul consists of your mind, your will, and your emotions. And what the enemy does, he creates situations where the unredeemed mind and the unredeemed <coughs> soul and the unredeemed will is left totally in his diabolical hands. But on the other hand, the believer has been transferred out of darkness into the marvelous light. 
and his mind, his will, and his emotions can come under the authority and power of the Holy Spirit. The unbeliever has, he doesn't have that advantage because he has been born again. Once you're born again, my friend, you're placed in a position where you don't have to get involved with things of the world. You can actually totally give your soul, your mind, and your will over to the one who has redeemed you from the sin, from sin. I hope that makes some sense because that's the way I've learned it over the years through scripture and through my own experience. I've been a believer for about 40 years, so that doesn't say a whole lot, but it says I've been a believer. So if you've been a believer for over 40 years, or two years, or three years, and you have not learned something about Christ, are uh, you in the wrong area, or you under the wrong ministry? All you know is money and choir rehearsal, you, you're in trouble. All you know is uh, jealousy and envy and uh, talking about individuals, you, you're in deep trouble. And I'm afraid if you are in, uh, with that mindset, you would go before the judgment seat of Christ and everything uh, that is not Christ uh, will be shaken, will be taken away and burned in the fire. But he himself shall be saved for he's on the foundation. I want to say something again about Christ. Now, we know this, those of us that are truly pursuing Christ, born after Christ, with all of our heart, with all of our knowledge, with all of our ingenuity we can, we go after Christ. There are some times we are slack, but our overall heart is to go after Christ, to get, gain as much of Christ, and line tight to change me from day to day into the image of, of, of Him who has called me from uh, the dust. And now He wants me to, in, in my soul life, in my emotions, in my mind, to be shaped into the image of his dear son. The book of Romans chapter 8, 28 and 29. The soul is what, <clears throat> is what Jesus is alluding to here. Now, Satan has a diabolical plan. He wants you to look at color, education, money, prestige, the final things of life, the clothing, the fine food, education, the beautiful women, the handsome men, and Satan, Satan is very shrewd in what he does. Now if you, if you unregenerate it, and don't know Jesus, or that's what you see. And on the other hand, you may have been regenerated, but actually you're working out of your soul instead of spirit. There are two places we can actually work as a believer, in the spirit or out of the spirit. I think in the book of Galatians, chapter 5, 15 and 16, it says, Walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. The, the Spirit and flesh are contrary to one another. They're constantly in this battle. And your will, and your mind, and your emotions can be caught up in it if you're not totally giving yourself over to Christ. Not my will be done, but thy will be done. The flesh is powerful, but it has no power that can match the work of the Holy Spirit in a believer. <clears throat> so what Jesus is saying here, from my understanding, and from a biblical perspective, is that 
you that are laden, you that are burdened with sins, you that are going through some trials and tribulations, listen here, come unto me all ye that labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. The soul is here, he's speaking to, because Jesus can see, you see, he knows what's in you. He knows what's in man. You don't have to spit out what's in you. Christ already knows. He knows if it's hatred or malice there. He knows that. He knows if there's adulterous thoughts and idolatry and hate and malice and unforgiveness. He knows that's already there. You, you can't hide that from him. God knows the heart of every one of us. And pray that if you have given yourself over to Christ, be willing to carry things out in the will, in his will. Not my will, but thy will. There's always opportunities for you to put on display your will and what you think. But it's, it's a wonderful thing when you get to a place in your life that what you think, you want to think what Christ thinks. And once you get to that place of submission and surrender to Christ, you'll be surprised and overwhelmed at what the Spirit can accomplish through you. This is what he's saying here in a nutshell. Come unto me, all that labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He talked about the soul being overwhelmed and swamped and submerged, buried completely, drowning in the deluge of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. That's the, that is the mindset of the majority of the, of the unbelieving world. I say the majority because there is no spiritual insight into the depth of corruption that may be in a heart or in the heart of the unbeliever. The heart is despicably wicked who can know it. God knows it. How wicked it really is. And this is why Christ is concerned about the soul. The heart is the heart of man. is soul life. The mind, the will, and the emotions. And whatever your mind tells you and whatever your emotions dictate to you that's how you express it is expressed in the body or through the body or through the word, through the lips some way it is open to a point that where others know exactly where you are over a period of time where your heart is, where your mind is you got a lot of individuals out here even good people who allow their emotions and their mind and their will to dictate their lives. I think it's rather tragic when a person of color, not your color, can dictate to you how you serve Christ. I think it's a tragedy when an idea can come from a newscaster or from Facebook 
or from some other source plant that seed in the mind and it germinates and produces a generation of individuals that don't know a thing in the world about Jesus. Be careful. But the mind is solely on Jesus. Practice is love, forgiveness, kindness, self-control, endurance, patience, joy, love, all those attributes of Christ and Christ John, I mean, Paul spoke about that in the book of uh, Galatians the fruit of the spirit you get a chance um, go there take a look there's a big difference now you can be good but it can be full of hypocrisy it is a world has a, a goodness about it but you stay around long enough you can smell the stench of the flesh and there's a goodness that comes from Christ and it has a sweet aroma of God's grace and mercy. God knows what you're going through. That's why the invitation was given here. Come unto me all that labor and heaven laid and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, learn of me for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Soul, body, laden, loaded down, burden, loaded down with heavy cares of this life, full of cargo, things that you picked up of the flesh. And now you're trying to keep your balance because you're, you're so heavy laden. Drugs, alcohol, the finest beer, the finest wine, <clears throat> another shot of vodka, another shot of Hennessy, trying to stay afloat. Every morning you get up, your head is still swimming from the night before. In time, you have collected so many burdens that it has, they have become an enormous monster. No one wants to approach you. No one wants to say the thing to you. You become a, an expressless blob. No feelings, no concerns, no help. This is, who, this is who Christ is speaking to here. And this is who he's speaking to now. Right now. Come unto me. All that labor and heavy laden I will give you rest. I'm sharing this with you because I've, I've been here, my brothers and sisters. I was um, hopelessness. Hopeless. Fleshly. From the top of my head to the crown of my feet. But over the years, the burdens and the heaven laden of sin came crushing in. And I'm so glad that this verse, these verses were found here in scriptures. God's word is eternal. It was able to rescue 2,000 years ago and more the same word the same one that spoke these words are able to save your soul if you confess and turn to him Lord Jesus come into my heart and save me right now and he will he knows your name and for the to, and for the believer who is caught up in the world system of philosophy, 
I know you're struggling with the round mental question, with the social issues, with the future of your grandchildren, the future even of yourself. That is a concern and Christ knows it is a concern for a believer to have concerns in that matter. I have concerns of that same nature, but I don't allow I don't allow those oh, concerns to overwhelm me because of the presence of the Spirit of Christ. They don't become a burden to me. Um, there's a passage of scripture, not a passage, but as a saying, worry about nothing. There's a lot of things to worry about. You don't have to pick them out. They, they come to you from the system. You don't have to look in somewhere to, to go find something to worry about or look to a book to find something to worry about or go to somebody here or a problem to worry about. No, they come from the system. Satan is a master at projecting thoughts into the minds of the believer and he has total control over the mind of the unbeliever. I hope you understand that. But the believer has a rescue. He has a, a place that he can go as, as the cliche goes, worry about nothing, pray about everything. I think you'll find in the book of, of, of Philippians, be anxious for nothing. Pray about everything. That's what it says here. Of course, the, the enemy is going to project and throw these fiery darts at you. But the shield of faith of Lord Jesus Christ shall rise and protect you. That's what this message, I hope that, that it has helped. Truly, I'm speaking from experience. I'm not speaking just, I read something, we, sure we read. But experience is our best teacher. I was talking to my wife the other night, I was speaking to her about some things that I believe that Christ has for us. You don't need to go anywhere outside of scripture to find answers. They're right here. Up to my spiritual answers to spiritual things. Over the years, you just have to find a way to appropriate what has been shared from the scriptures with you as individuals who are ministering Christ. How to minister that? How to use that to bring people more closely to Christ and to give light and understanding to those who are walking in darkness. That's what I mean by that. I want you to pray for us. Continue to uh, support us in any way you can through your prayers and whatever other way by inviting someone to your house. And I would say one or two people, you want to stay the social distance, but as you sit and view the lessons, and Elder Miles is teaching on Thursdays at 5 o'clock, you also can invite, I would say, invite two or three people over and you wear your mask if it's feasible. Keep your sanitizers near. But you want to meet, two or three meet in my name, I will be in the midst of you. And maybe Jesus even saw that far ahead. I know he did. We can't meet. Yeah, we can meet. Two or three of us can meet. And Jesus said he'll be there in the midst of it. So, Keep us in your mind. Keep us in your prayers. And keep in fact that you have a brother or sister who made, who are laden down with these particular things that we shared with you this morning. And But they need to be exposed to the gospel that they can benefit through the call of Christ. The invitation that Christ has given. 
He gave it that day, but he has not taken it back. It is still good. It's still valued. Valid. Come unto me, all ye that labor, and laden, and I will give you rest. Elamiah is doing a great teaching on uh, thir uh, Thursdays at uh, 5 o'clock. And you have to call this number, 804-714-5530, to get the, uh, get the conference call number and code. He's been dealing with the talents, the natural talent, and also the spiritual gifts that God gives us once you trust Christ as your personal Savior. God gives you a gift, gives you a talent, I'm sorry, when you're born, when you first come into the world, you have a natural talent. Uh, but because of the modern era, electronics, most individuals don't rely on that natural talent. I don't know what it is. Because electronics have robbed the natural instinct to respond to something in a natural way. And also God gave the believer a spiritual gift when he or she was born again. And that spiritual gift is to glorify Christ and to magnify him. And I believe that it works when it is under the authority of Christ loving. When you love people, that gift will, will come forth and begin to operate. Along with the gift of natural gift comes under the authority of the Spirit of Christ through the will of man and the spiritual gift works through the authority of the Holy Spirit when one is loving in the proper sense. So I, I advise you to tune in and at 5 o'clock on Compass Call. Call that number 804-714-5530 and we we'll get you the necessary information. Again, thanks for this morning. We Keep us in your prayers and we pray that this message this morning has given you light and give you more understanding of who Jesus is. I want to say this next week we looked at uh, the call today. Next week we're going to look at the yoke. How the yoke works on the, with the believer as Christ says here. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. So take care my brothers and sisters. Father in Jesus name we pray that the message will meet its potential and your particular eternal purpose. In Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Take care.